Hello students. Today I am going to share with you the poem Lines Written in Early Spring by William Wordsworth. So, before beginning with the poem, let's have a look over the brief biography or the introduction to the poet. William Wordsworth 1770-1850 was a major romantic poet based in the Lake District, England. His greatest work was The Prelude dedicated to Samuel Taylor Coleridge, another great poet. Means his greatest work, William Wordsworth's greatest writing the prelude has been dedicated to S.T. Coleridge, who is another great poet. The prelude is a spiritual autobiography based on Wordsworth's travels through Europe and his observations of life. His poetry also takes inspiration from the beauty of nature, especially his native Lake District. Means in his poetry, in the poetry of William Wordsworth, it becomes clear that the poet takes inspiration from the beauties of nature, especially from his native Lake District. Let us now begin with the text of the poem, Lines written in early spring i heard a thousand blended notes while in a grove i sat reclined in that sweet mood when pleasant thoughts bring sad thoughts to the mind i heard a thousand blended notes while in a grove i sat reclined in this very first stanza or in the beginning lines the poet William Wordsworth who is also known as a pastoral poet or poet of nature in these lines he is talking about or he tells us that once he was sat here means once he was sitting reclined reclined means means he was sitting in a resting position in a grove grove means group of trees he tells us that once he was sitting in the among the group of tree, trees in a resting position i heard a thousand blended notes and at the same time he heard thousands of mixed sweet sounds notes here means sounds in that sweet mood when pleasant thoughts bring sad thoughts to the mind. The poet tells us that uh, in that sweet mood when he was, uh, when a number of pleasant thoughts were coming into his mind, those pleasant thoughts brought out sad thoughts into his mind. These lines show his mixed mood means he was happy and sad at the same time to her fair works did nature link the human soul that through me ran and much it grieved my heart to think what man has made of man in these lines the poet says that nature has brought him on to this earth from the heaven for fair works to do good works the human soul that through me ran the poet says that nature has connected itself nature link to her fair works did nature link the human soul that through me ran in these lines the poet says that the nature has linked or means connected 
हर सेल्फ विद द ह्यूमन सोल थ्रू हिम थ्रू द पोइट एंड मच इट ग्रीव माई हार्ट टू थिंक वट मैन हैज मेड ऑफ मैन एंड द पोइट इज दैट नेचर हैज सेंट हिम टू दिस अर्थ टू डू गुड वर्क बट ही फील्स ग्रीव ग्रीव मीन्स अनहैप्पी ही फील्स अनहैप्पी to think what man has made of man that nature has sent a man to help another man to support another person but a man is doing totally opposite he is not helping another man so he is uh, unhappy at this thought that what man has made of man that a man is not helping another person through primrose tufts in that green bower the periwinkle trailed its wreaths and it's my faith that every flower enjoys the air it breathes through primrose tufts primrose is a type of plant a small plant having yellow color flowers tufts means uh a number of flowers a number of flowers on any plant in that green bower that periwinkle trailed its wreaths and it's my faith that every flower enjoys the air it breathes in this stanza the poet says that in this stanza the poet is telling us about the beauties of nature through prime rose tufts in that green bower the periwinkle trailed its wreaths he says that in the prime rose flowers or a number of flowers that are uh, on the that are uh, blossomed on the prime rose plants in that green bower the periwinkle trailed its wreaths periwinkle is also type of plant and it's my faith that every flower enjoys the air it breathes he says that every flower which has been blossomed on uh, any plant flowery plant every flower enjoys the air it breathes that uh, he means to say in this stanza that everything connected with nature is enjoying it the birds around me hopped and played their thoughts i cannot measure but the least motion which they made it seemed a thrill of pleasure the birds around me hopped and played in this stanza the poet says that a number of birds are hopping and playing around him while he is sitting in a garden in a, a group of tree among the group of trees a number of birds are hopping and hopping means jumping and playing around him their thoughts i cannot measure he says that a number of thoughts are into the minds of birds on at the same time but he cannot measure their feelings when they are enjoying the nature but the least motion which they made it seemed a thrill of pleasure but he can notice that while enjoying the beauties of nature they are enjoying extreme pleasure pleasure means happiness the budding twigs spread out their fan to catch the breezy air and i must think do all i can the budding twigs spread out their fan to catch the breezy air in this stanza also the poet is talking about the beauties of nature he says that the budding twigs twigs here means branches he says that the branches of trees having buds buds means small flowers 
are spreading out themselves. Why? To catch the breezy air. They are enjoying the breezy air and they are spreading out their fans. Fans means branches laden with uh, leaves. And I must think do all I can that there was pleasure there. The poet says that he can observe that all the things of nature are enjoying the pleasant weather. They are enjoying it. If this belief from heaven be sent, if such be nature's holy plan, have I not reason to lament what man has made of man? In the concluding lines or in this concluding, uh, in the last stanza, the poet says that nature or God has sent man on this earth from heaven with the belief if such be nature's holy plan he has sent God or the Almighty has sent man on this earth with the belief with the holy plan that he will help another person or another man or will support him have I not reason to lament what man has made of man? But he says that actually it is not the same. The man on this earth is not supporting or helping the another man. So he says that he has a reason to lament. Lament means to cry. He has a reason to cry over the fact what man has made of man means a man is not supporting the other man so he is not uh, following the holy plan of nature or God so students this was the discussion of our very first poem lines written in early spring tomorrow we will Continue with the next lecture of next poem. Thank you. Thank you very much.